Hi everyone, welcome or welcome back to Sended Moments channel. I'm John Luma and in this video I want to talk about three fragrances that I would keep for the rest of my life. So this is that typical, that video that you already saw over and over again. Uh, so, but it's been a while. I mean, the last time I did a video like this, it was like two years ago and it was a tag video back then. It was like five fragrances for a life tag video. Um, so I wanted to do now three fragrances for life, but uh, designer and niche. Uh, I will not milk this cow like doing three designers now and then three niche fragrances in the other video. No, I just want to and uh, to start and end this subject. Uh, three fragrances for life, three designers, three niche fragrances. Uh, so technically it's six fragrances for life. Um, these are fragrances that I will always keep for the rest of my life. These are fragrances that if I would need to restart my fragrance collection, these are the ones that I would start my collection again. Uh, so with that being said, the first fragrance, I will start with the designers, uh, the designer fragrances in a no specific order. So the first fragrance in the designer side of things that I will mention is, well, it doesn't need any introduction in this channel. I love this. It's from the house of Christian Dior and it is Dior Homme Parfum. This is still the older bottle presentation, the 75 ml bottle presentation. Um, I absolutely love this. This is iris, leather, rose, woods, done to perfection. Uh, this is so intense and sensual and so intoxicating. I just want to smell this over and over. And it's very, very long lasting. So this is perfect for cold weather, perfect for um, night outs, for um, if you want to go to, I don't know, some kind of event, uh, outdoors uh, type of event, this is the one that you will definitely, you do definitely need to wear. If you like these type of fragrances, like this, uh, iris, very intense butchery iris with leather, rose, woods, oh, so complex and intense, so many layers, a bit spicy. Some people say that this has oud, I never get, I never got any oud in here, I don't know, um, maybe it's just me, but Dion Parfum is a masterpiece in my opinion and it's a scent that I will always have in my collection, so this is definitely a fragrance that I will always keep for the rest of my life. It's Dio Homme Parfum. Now the next fragrance is from the house of Chanel and this was hard uh, because again this year is the year of Chanel and I've been enjoying so many Chanel fragrances but this is still my favorite um, at least mainstream Chanel and I don't know even when comparing with the exclusives uh, it's it's there it's there i don't know if it's my favorite still but it's there uh as my, one of my favorites so i was between this one egoist or sycamore so yeah egoist oh one uh egoist is just so good uh this is again my favorite mainstream channel fragrance this has so many layers so you have the carnation, you have the spices, you have the sandalwood, you have, I think you still have a hint of rose in here if I'm not mistaken, but the carnation is definitely more intense. So you have the spices, you have the sandalwood, you have the carnation, and, and I mean, it's this is just an aromatic, yes, definitely aromatic, spicy, dry, floral floral but not in a feminine way i mean carnation it's it's a very masculine floral um note uh another carnation fragrance that i absolutely love and it's very underrated it's from sergeoff actually from the casa moradi line it's 1888 it's an amazing fragrance a fantastic masculine gentlemanly scent with lots of carnation, amber, and spices. Uh, very different still from Egoist, but that carnation, it's just so good. Um, oh, but this one, it's oh, so many layers again, complex. 
a bit smoky a bit a tad a tad bit but it's definitely aromatic spicy very peppery woodsy dry floral it's just perfect this is a perfect signature scent more for the colder weather i would say this for me it's perfect for winter it's a perfect signature scent for winter time uh yes this is more mature um meaning that i mean if you are 18 years old 20 years old i mean i doubt that you will appreciate this one even uh, because this is it's heavy it's a heavy perfume in my opinion uh, and the carnation gives more gentlemanly more mature more old school uh, impression so i understand that this will not appeal to the young noses but uh, for me this is a perfect sense this is perfect it has everything this has complexity this has the high quality ingredients the blend it's just perfect and it's incredible this was released in 1993 if i'm not mistaken i mean this was first released as bois noir if i'm not mistaken in 1989 then this was re-released as egoists in the early 90s if i'm not mistaken i think it was in the early 90s yes it was in the early 90s um incredible this is incredible and, and i think this is quite an, this is quite underrated in the chanel uh universe especially in the men's uh section uh, i think the marketing back then when when this was first released it wasn't great um but i'm just glad that we can still experience this one to this day this is a masterpiece another one uh, this is another masterpiece in my opinion uh, one of the best sandalwood fragrances used in here. Um, is it natural smelling? It's natural smelling sandalwood. Uh, I mean, I would say yes, but I doubt that they are using really natural sandalwood ingredients. Um, but I think this cr comes across as um, a high quality sandalwood, a uh, spicy, dry sandalwood. It's just fantastic. Um, Actually, the sandalwood used in here, it's quite similar. I find a lot of similarities with uh, between this one, Egoist, and um, what's the Bois, Bois des Iles from the Les Exclusives. I find a lot of similarities. Being in Bois des Iles doesn't have the complexity that this one has because of the carnation. Um, I love this one again. This is very masculine, elegant, gentleman, and this is very sophisticated. Um, it's a type of scent that uh, you need to try, at least. It's Egoist from Chanel. And last but definitely not least, from the designer side of things, it's from the house of Tom Ford, and this time it's not Tobacco Vanille. I love, love Tobacco Vanille. I was this close to featured uh, in this video Tobacco Vanille, but my recent acquisition. This is my recent acquisition, and uh, I wanted to diverse things here a bit more i wanted to make things a bit more versatile i mean i already have a heavy a very heavy fragrance like dion parfum is egoist it's less heavy but still it's heavy i mean i'm not seeing myself wearing this one in the high heat not at all uh even in spring it's in more cold days of spring um so i needed something lighter than tobacco bunny and so this is my latest acquisition again and how come i just bought this recently um but well better later than never it is beau de jour from tom ford uh, i really like this bottle presentation uh feels good in the hand um and beau de jour i mean it's often compared with davidoff zeno i have davidoff zeno if you want me to do a video by comparing uh, Beau de Jour with Zeno, tell me in the comments down below if you want that video. Um, but I can see the similarities, but they are still very there. There are a lot of differences, uh, and this one is definitely more versatile. So this has an overdose of lavender. I absolutely love the lavender used in here. It's green. You have basil in here. Uh, you have oak moss. It's very mossy, green, earthy. You have because of the patchouli. 
it's wonderful so it's green mossy aromatic floral earthy scent yeah this is masculine this is very masculine it's a modern barbershop scent done to perfection i absolutely love this uh man this is one of the best lavender fragrances that i ever experienced uh and this is signature scent worthy through the entire year um, I, I mean how come just now <laughs> i'm talking about this fragrance um but uh yeah i'm happy i'm really happy to have this one it's really one of the best releases of tom four and i um, very glad that they re-released this in the more mainstream line in the signature scent line um it's a great great perfume uh, so yeah it's that type of scent that i will always cherish in my collection tom ford beau du jour now let's talk about niche fragrances first fragrance that i will always have it's from profumo roma patchouli <laughs> again patchouli yes but I, i'm being i've been enjoying this one so so much i love patchouli fragrances um i already did a video about my favorite patchouli fragrances so feel free to check that video out this is my favorite still um this is the best in my opinion i mean that's it uh, if you want just one patchouli scent this is the one it's patchouli from profumo Roma. it's earthy it's chocolatey it's damp intense thick and resinous has resins in the base that it's mm, just incredible i love this i love this so much um and it's again that type of scent that i will always have in my collection well to be fair well if I would only have one fragrance brand, it will be Profumo Broma. Uh, at least today, at, at, the, at this moment that I'm uh, filming this video. Uh, but I don't know, maybe tomorrow would be a different answer. Uh, but now it will definitely be Profumo Broma. But because lately I've been enjoying this one so much, I've been wearing this one so much. But surely, ah, it's so good, especially for the colder weather. Um, it's amazing. It's an amazing wear. It's a high quality, natural smelling scent that it's for, it's made for patchouli lovers. So this is patchouli from Profumo Broma. The next fragrance, it's from the house of Amouage. And this is one of my all time favorites from Amouage. It is the Blue Beast Interlude Man. Man, this is so good. Interlude Man, I mean, doesn't need any introduction. After all, this has already two flankers. I mean, Amouage doing flankers is just... Uh, I, I don't know what they're thinking. I'm not saying that their fragrances are bad, but uh, I'm expecting more uniqueness, more originality from Amouage. Uh, although everyone is saying that I never tried the 53. The, the Black Iris, I mean, it's okay. Uh, it's okay. I will never... I think... Well, who knows, but at least so far, for now, I will not um, purchase a full bottle. I don't feel the need for it. I think it's destroying the uniqueness of this one. I mean, the iris goes well, but I mean, this scent is not supposed to have iris. This scent is supposed to be spicy, bold, loud, um, oriental, you know, I mean, it's just dark it's a dark fragrance uh, and adding iris i mean iris i think it doesn't go well with the scent dna i mean it works how they did i mean i think kind of works but mm, i prefer the original still no i never tried the 53 uh everyone is saying that the 53 is actually amazing but it's incredibly pricey and i mean do you really need like a, a more intense or an and a higher concentration fragrance of a fragrance that it's already intense with good, concent good concentration. I mean, this is another parfum concentration, so I mean, I don't know. Um, but I just, I just love this. Uh, this is spicy. You have 
you have oud, you have smokiness, you have frankincense. It's a very smoky, dark, resinous. It has this campfire uh, impression that I just love. I have oregano, which for me, it's incredibly unique. And they basically took the oregano note to add iris and uh, they just destroyed the essence <laughs> of this fragrance. Um, I love this. It's intense, it's bold, and it's it's unique. When this was released, it's it was unique, and for me, it's still unique. Well, thinking when this was first released, you have now a lot of fragrances that are heavily inspired in this scent DNA, just like in Jubilation 25, which I absolutely love. Uh, but well, I wanted a fragrance that it would have frankincense, oud, resins, labdanum. Uh, would be smoky, would be more daring, would be spicy. So I think this fragrance has everything in one perfect scent DNA. I love this. Uh, and it's very long lasting. Uh, hey, hey, sometimes I wear this to the office and I already got some compliments. So hey, <laughs> there's that. Uh, but Interlude Man from Amorge. I mean, it's, it's already a classic in my opinion that you definitely need to try. And last, but again, definitely not least, I wanted a more fresher, more lighter scent. Not, I mean, this scent is not that fresh, but still, it's definitely fresher than uh, Interlude or Patchouli from Perfume Broma. It's from the house of Frederic Mal, and it is music for a while. So unique, so good. The best pineapple accord is in this fragrance with lavender and patchouli. Uh, this fragrance for me is perfect for spring, summer, uh, early fall. The pineapple here is very sweet, very realistic, very juicy with this amazing lavender in the opening. The lavender in here kind of reminds me of the lavender of Caron Pour Un Homme, which is great. It's a great reference for lavender. And then you have this green, a bit earthy patchouli that gives more body, more oomph. To this scent i mean i this fragrance is to die for it has tropical um it has this tropical vibe from the pineapple very exotic um with the freshness of lavender that makes this fragrance more versatile and likable and then you have this earthy patchouli just to make this fragrance more Umfier, <laughs> just to so that this fragrance would have more body, more character, more power. <laughs> so yeah, I, I absolutely love this. Um, this is very unique. It's this note combination. It's not. It would not be a note that I would say a note breakdown that I would say. Well, wow, this for sure, it's amazing. No, uh, I mean actually, this was not love at first sniff when I first tried this one. Um, but uh, last year, actually, I sampled this fragrance again and wow, what I've been missing here. Uh, and I immediately purchased a full bottle. Um, it's, it's wonderful. Yes, I mean, I could have added a more versatile scent like French Lover, Vetiver Extraordinaire, but I prefer the uniqueness of this one. Of the, I love the pineapple uh, in here. so. This is very playful, sweet, fruity. I mean, it's sweet, fruity done well, you know. Um, it's just perfect. This is a perfect scent. Um, and it goes well in summer. I wore this a lot last summer. Um, so I think this really works wonderfully during summertime. During spring as well, because of the lavender and uh, this more green patchouli. It's a stunning scent. So it's music for a while from Frederic Mal finishing this video. So guys, these are the six fragrances for life that I would keep in my collection or that I would restart my collection. Guys, tell me in the comments down below if you enjoyed this video. Tell me also what fragrances would you have for life? Three niche, three designers. Tell me everything in the comments down below guys. and. As always, see you in the next video. Take care. Ciao.